Okay, um, we're going to link Singing Lanius and Wise Tricks into some more Bird of Sovereignty, Union Carry Effect. Good. We shall equip the Simorgo with Miss Valley Thunderbird. Um, effect of Infinity. We will attach the Union Carrier. I will set one, move to end phase, effect of Simorg. Sweet. Sweet. We will summon out Apex Avion. And we will... Yeah, we'll pass. No me fue el día del desierto. Yo nunca había visto la verdadera belleza hasta esta noche. We're on a win streak, we're on a win streak, we're on a win streak, oh we are on a win streak. It feels so good after 17 long episodes, we finally ended on a positive record for once and now it is up to us to defend that two win streak, make it a three, make it a four, make it a five. That is the goal for today and um, we have got some product to make that happen. So. Gentlemen, as always, before we hop into the lovely product, be so kind to hit that like button because are you feeling the positivity today? I'm feeling it. But we're not going to get cocky because, um, yeah, last time we got super cocky when we had all those amazing pulls, we had Gator, we, got blah, 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 we lost 3-0. So we're not going to get overly cocky. We're going to go in with caution and we are going to come out guns a-blazing. But, yep, like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to support me and my addiction to opening product into trying to find very, 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 very short printed cards for a very old strategy that may or may not work, yeah, links are down below in the description. But... Let's hop into that product. So not only do we have 27 and 50 cents worth of Cybernetic Horizon, you may be wondering what I'm doing to fill out to reach 40. I'm actually slightly over 40. We're at 41 dollars again, but you know, fight me. And I actually found a seller on eBay who sold me something, it is sealed, it may not be in the box, but uh, we're revisiting an old friend. Ah, oh, you guys remember this from episode one? I'm sure you do. Um, because there are still two cards that we can finish our play sets of that we actually will definitely need, and there's only one way to access one of those cards. And um, yeah, let's actually just get right into it. Let's just get right into it. Let's. Enough jibber jabber. This thing wants to open. Sealed. Another Dragoonity Arm Levitin, which is nice. But what we do need actually. Oh, this actually has a little crease. I think I can see that at the corner. Luckily, we don't need you. Because we only need a really one of. But we need another Missile Tame. So, this is a very important, especially later down the line. When we can do some XC's plays with him and just he's a free extender. Yep, he's very good. Ankless, uh, common ducks, legionnaire. Let's uh, make a pile. Uh, legionnaire, trivia, star spear, <laughs> militum. Oh my god, memory lane, primus pillars, brandestock, javelin, the miss valley falcon. Not the miss valley we need. We want another miss valley hunter owl. There we go, Garuda the wind spirit. It's essentially Garud. Lord Vishnu's Mount! Anyway, uh, yeah, he's uh, basically a free extender for us. 
Fine Comic Book Hero number one, Spirit Dragon, Twin Headed Behemoth, level three, level five, Master Dragon two of another a common Dragon Ravine. How funny! Uh, Dragon Mastery, United We Stand, Mage Power, Dragon Gunfire. Yeah, you. We've all seen this in episode one. It's cool that we have all. I wish we could play more of these, but yeah, you know. Bring back the crutch. No, we're not bringing back the crutch. Uh, bottomless Earth Attack, you know. Our common pile is very ticked today because it's a structure deck. But anyway, um, whoa, okay. Why? You can't see it. There we go. Ta-da! Anyway, um, the hunt for another Senatus as well, more importantly, as an Ascalon continues. Arborea, Mini Boral. Restoration Port Card, Draco, Maximus, Cyber Switch, Decoy Dragon, Boar Regenerator, Legacy Mind. We are on the hunt for an Ultra. We have 11 packs. So odds are likely we will pull an Ultra. Restoration Point Card, Goki Ring Trainer, Cupid Volley. Ooh, I'll take a Senatus. We now have a play set. Uh, Renew Renewal of the World. Inclusia, Regenerator, Sphere, Lebel Man, Purtle. Okay. Um, you know what? The packs have at least Cybernetic Horizon has, deli has delivered. We have three Senators. One's a common, but you know, uh, we need an Ascalon. We need the big level 10 Synchro, and this is the only place where we can get him. Universal Adapter, Breaking of the World, Psychic Ace, Beast Magic Attack, Hayate, Talismandra, Terrible Tide, Toddler, Gech. Labellman, yeah. Come on. Come on. Let's just breeze through the packs. Uh, gun. We've seen this set so many times, so I'm actually just gonna cut to this the hollow. Uh, no. Crusade Revival Towns Mandra. Because we've seen the set so, so many times. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Luin and Vorticular Drum Gun. That's not the synchro that we wanted. We have a place at a Luin now, if I'm not mistaken. And. Oh, Mag, yes. We're getting there. Four packs to go. <sighs> Mirror Force Launcher. Candle. We got a Coos, too. But we already have plenty of Coos. Coos, Coos. Okay. Wee Witch. Crossbreed. Come on. Two packs left. Oh, my God. Come on, come on, come on. Point guard, mini board. Da, da, da. Zernatron. World crown. Last pack. Bless up. Bless up. Elemental lord. Man, we gotta get more cybernetic horizon. Oh well, but on the plus side... We now have completed our playset of uh, Senatus, that's very important, and we now have Triple Mistletane and Triple Garuda, the Wind Spirit, in our deck, so you know what, I will take uh, Senatus pull, and um, yeah, let's go tweak the deck. So with all the Dragoonity and Wind Engine additions to the deck, I feel that we should actually look at the theory behind the deck making process. So, um, our starters, we have our Triple Senatus. And our triple ducks. These are our important starters that we want to see in our hand. These enable us to go into our level six synchro plays as well as Romulus. But just in case we need to get into Romulus, we also has Legionnaire as another normal summon in the deck. Nine normal summons that we have in total. We want to see at least one of these cards in our opening hand. Paired with our normal summons, we need to have access to our tuners. So we have three of the coups, which we have plenty of that. And then our one phalanx, we're going to need to get more phalanx. However, for now, we can function with just one. 
And in order to access our normal summon as well as get our tuners into graveyard, we are running our three Dragon Ravine. And in order to access them even more, we have our one terraforming. It is in very, very, very important that we see our Dragon Ravine. Now, as for the extenders, we have got so many extenders, it is ridiculous. So we now have our triple Mistletane, we have our triple Garuda, as well as triple Crusadia Draco. These are our generic extenders. They will enable us to go either into our Ultimaya Zulkan line in order to access our Dragoonity Synchro line and then also give us LP fodder as well. These are just great. If we get interrupted, we will always have at least some kind of extender on hand to push through uh, any kind of Ash Blossom and permanence, ideally. But the dragon good stuff does not stop there because we've got even more one-off extenders with our Galactic Spiral which gives us our rank 8 plays as well as potential Ultimaya Zulkan lines, our best Tempest who gives us basically access to our entire deck, and our, star our Supreme King Dark Worm who will basically can act as a one card starter with a um, Dragon Ravine so we can pitch him to the graveyard or send him to the graveyard along with a tuner we can get Luin access and then without using our normal summon this card is great. Now more ways to get our tuners into the graveyard and to fix our hand we have of course our two cards of consonants but also more importantly if we need graveyard set up we have our double dragon shrine which is essentially a foolish burial for dragons. Now, we also have more spell extenders with our one Return of the Dragon Lords and our one World Legacy of Succession, which is effectively a monster reborn in this deck. Now, we do have two Garnets that we do not want to see in our opening hand. However, we can function with them in our opening hand, and that is our Leviton and our Divine Lance. Divine Lance is what we want to add off of Romulus. Leviton is what we normally want to summon off of Elpi. Um, in the future, we will probably be summoning Leviton off of uh, Heratic Dragon Atom, but until we get Atom, he is our primary LP target. And then to round off the main deck, we have our one Gogur and our one Ash. These are just bonus stuff. If we get like a Saryuja, we can fix our hand and potentially draw into these. Or even if we open these and we're going second, it's just nice to have something. Obviously, moving further down the line, we're going to tweak stuff in if we get more Ash or more Ogre and more other hand traps. It's always good to see in the hand. Extra deck. Pretty self-explanatory. Not much change at all, actually. We have our Lynx, LP. Romulus, Triple Burst, IP, Saryuja, Appaloosa, and Borosaur. We have a very diverse toolbox, but it's pretty linear in terms of what we want to do. We want to start off with our Romulus, we can then get into an LP and our Triple Burst, we can then bring out more resources, go into Saryuja if need be, which can then extend us further, and we have more extended, we can end in Appaloosa, or if we're going second, we have Boral Sword access, and then IP gives us extra protection for either an Appaloosa or a Boral Sword. And we have our one Hope Harbinger. This is one of our end board pieces. We can easily make him with Galactic Spiral Dragon, but we can also overlay Leviton alongside a Barcha. Speaking of our synchros, our level six lineups, Lewin, Gaiderg, Gay Bulg. Uh, Lewin, great extender, helps us with Ultimate Zulkan plays. Gaiderg helps search, fix our hand. We can search a, even a Garuda of the Wind Spirit, search an extender, pitch a tuner, or even pitch a Tempest. So he's a great card, a great toolbox card. And we still have our Gay Bulg until we, unfortunately, until we can actually replace him, but he's my favorite one. He's just a good beater. Um, and then for our eights, we have our Cyframe Lord Omega. We can make him quite easily with uh, Mistletane plus any uh, Phalanx that we have. Our very good boy, Barcha, who is essentially a soul charge for the deck. And then one of our main win cons, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. This card's too good. I love it. I love to abuse it. In order to bring him out, we have our Ultimaya Zulkin. On to the side deck, Hand Traps, Ghost Bell, my favorite, DD Crow, and Effect Veiler. And then also for more going second shenanigans in terms of Monster Lamp, we have our Pank, Gamma Seal, and our Sphere Mode for those combo players. The spell lineup is pretty small, but it is very valuable. We have Back Row Hate and Cosmic and Twinnies, and then for going second, we have Mind Control and Raigeki. As for the trap lineup, our going second traps, or even just back row hate traps, we have our red reboot as well as our evenly matched. But if we are definitely going first, we do have some more blowout cards in our Lost Wind, our Solemn Strike, and our Dimensional Barrier, which can be given very useful in rogue matchups. All right, so match number one, we are going up against Jacob from the Jacob Show, one of our favorite patrons. And we're going up against mutants. I don't open great, 
my hand isn't great, and that's a problem. Uh, yeah. And I also have to face a whole bunch of interaction, and unfortunately, I just have to rely on my Crusadia Draco having a big butt, but that doesn't even matter because he's already got the arsenal and the mutant fusion. Yep. We go straight to game two. We get to go first this time. And this time round, we eat an Imperm. It hurts, but it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, we do not have a way to extend further with our Romulus quite yet, so. I just opt for, you know, we're just going to put an IP on the field and make it seem like we potentially have a play, so maybe he'll try to pop or send something to bait out an IP activation. He doesn't. He doesn't bite. So, uh, unfortunately, beats over both of our monsters, leaving us on a very, 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 very limited line of play. And, um, yeah, we just go into Game Boy and, you know, you know what, we're just going to old school fashion, my monster beats over your monster. Unfortunately, I don't have any protection for Game Boy and his mutants are able to swarm the field, and, yeah, that's a quick 2-0. But we move, and for our remote duel for this episode, we are going up against friend of the channel, Artist with a Fro. Check out his channel to stay in the know! And, uh, yeah, so we're going up against his, uh, sealed only Ancient Warrior deck, of all things. He goes first, but doesn't have too much to go with his just one monster and a couple back row, which means I potentially can do something. So I start to pop off. I use my Gator to also fix my hand a wee bit, set up in the graveyard. I get my Romulus out, and I'm able to actually pull through and push out with a full combo. Haven't, but I am nervous about that one back row. Um, regardless, I go into my uh, Guard Dragon plays, and I get met with a super poly that hurts because it deals with my triple burst and my lp that starving venom fusion dragon basically kind of shut out my plays and i haven't seen that card in a hot minute oh man um yeah ah that's really unfortunate so i just ended up scooping but it's okay, because now we can guaranteed go first. We don't have to worry about any set super polymerizations or anything. We just have to worry about any hand traps. But we go into our Ultimate Zulkin, and then we can be able to go into Romulus. We set our Divine Lance, which allows us to bring out the Crystal Wing, and now we can pop off with our regular combo, protected by a Crystal Wing. So our Yuja helps fix out our hand a wee bit. We don't get anything further, but then I also search a Dragon Ravine to... Um, you know, potentially dig further, which I end up activating it. I pitch the Tempest I have engraved to send a Galactic Spiral for future setups. I banish to get a beefed up Tempest under Saryuja, and I pass with a one card in hand. And he scoops. He can't push through. And actually, the card I had in hand was a Ghost Ogre. So, uh, that's two negates. Uh, and then it comes down to game number three. This is coming down to the wire. And I actually decided to go, um kind of a bit of both first and second because I honestly don't know really what to side in for the Ancient Warrior matchup. And I make a huge misplay here. I should not have activated evenly matched had I known that his um, Ancient Warrior could have actually negated the activation by sending visits. I wanted to kind of either leave him either with three visits on the field or just have an Ancient Warrior so he had, can only have one or one or the other. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out that way, and I just wasted an evenly match, and he's able to still fully pop off, get his extra normal sum for future setup. And then it comes back to me. I don't have many plays, per se, and there is that one back row I have to deal with. So I go into my Romulus, I search my Divine Lance, which gets met by a Cosmic Cyclone. I do, however, have World Legacy Succession in hand, and that's when I get hit by the Nibiru. <sighs> this Nibiru really, really, really put a damper on things, however. He did not have anything else to follow up. And on the next turn, I beat him down with an 8,800 attack Nibiru. Oh my god, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. When you don't have an answer for the gigantic token. And for match number three, we're oh, going up against Heroic Challenge. I have not played this. I, I played this deck once. I do not really know the matchup. I just know XC's monsters, rank four stuff. And we get to go first. And we're off of this fresh match win, so we're feeling good. We get to pop off with the protection of uh, Crystal Wing, and our Saryuja grabs us into a Ghost Ogre. 
And luckily, even though he beats up his um, monster with his quick play spell, I'm able to protect my Crystal Wing from destruction with the Return of the Dragon Lords in Grave, meaning I can push forward, I can make a Boral Sword Punch for game, but he discards his uh, Heroic Challenger, which prevents battle destruction and damage. But luckily, on the next turn, he can't push through a negate, as well as my Ghost Hunger Dude with his Goblin Bird, which means I am free to go into my Gable, my favorite Dragonity monster, and I push in for the first game, pretty convincingly. Game number two, it's a set three pass. Hello, Goat Format. Uh, but it turns out those sets are Imperms, which deal with my Ducks and my Romulus. Um, yeah. That kind of hurts because I don't have any extenders in hand to push even further, so it really you know, depends on what I am able to top deck. And he's protecting his searcher, battle searcher, with a utopia. I try to pop some of the monsters with the legionnaire, but that gets negated with the infect filler. So now it's just a matter of old school fashion monster beat, monster beat, and yeah, the double or nothing kind of just takes that game. Game number two, we open crazy, and we are able to even push through an Ash Blossom. We are able to have our full setup. We can go into our full combo. We bring out the Romulus. We search our Divine Lance. We then equip out our um, Kus, and then we Dragon Shrine to get our... Yeah. I misplay here. I accidentally went into Triple Burst before LP, and I reap what I sowed. However, even though we lost that match, I do initially feel bad. However, at the same time, we could have easily won that match had I just not done that one misplay. So all in all, I think with the consistency boosters, it's made a difference. And we also won with an Nibiru. We got Nibiru. And yet... All of that punching trees and training paid off because you know what we do with a gigantic 88,000 attack Nibiru token? We punch it back with it. So you know what? There's that little satisfaction out of that. But um, we're getting there. I have no. I think the consistency booster did definitely show some improvement to the deck. So all in all, yeah, I'll take that. Steady growth, steady growth, but we still are missing some vital pieces to the strategy, obviously. We'll just continue on until we get them. But we move, gentlemen. I will see you in the next episode.